Hey everybody, so another quick portfolio update to show what I'm doing with the copying because Amit is back in profit. Look at that. From near the bottom of the portfolio, it's really two from the bottom or one from the bottom. He's back up near the top again. How's he done that, right? Well, the Brazilian company, uh, one run by um, the it's an oil company run by potential leftist government. I don't know what's happening with the politics, but people saying that. That company is sort of consolidating, right? Consolidating, it's not going up or down, it's sort of going, price is going sideways. The market seems to think this is a fair price at the moment. Let's wait and see what happens next. That one's sort of staying stable. But the two coal companies are doing really well. This one's obviously in profit. And Whitehaven Coal, let's just go and have a look at Whitehaven. WHC uh, is actually, was up 5% yesterday. So look at that. If I look at the chart there for Whitehaven Coal, you can see this massive, each one of these, by the way, is called a candle. If you're not used to these, these are candles. And at the moment, you can set the time frame for each candle. We're, uh, each, at the moment, each candle is representing one day. So from the 18th there, we can see it going up and up and up and boom, up yesterday. Not sure why, not sure what's happening with the coal market. You can go out and see sort of longer term. Not sure what's happening with coal, but hopefully Amit does, and that's why he's still in it. Um, and he's up, look at that, so nice to see him. Um, back up there. We can have a look at his stats quickly and we can see that he was down minus 4.85% in February. So it was a bit of a rough month and he's up 3.38% so far in March. He's up 6.79% so far for the year. So in my portfolio, he's back up. I'm at 200 again. It's gone up back to 200. Let's have a look at my quickly, my stats. Where am I? Am I? Yes. Yeah, so 0 0.79 January, 0 0.10 in February and 0.43% for March. So we're at 1.32 for the year. So I'm back in profit. I'm back in green at the moment for March. That was down. Remember it was red. Uh, back to the portfolio. Uh, Swissway is still doing well. Melvin's moving up. He's doing, still doing really well. Keeps sort of edging his way up, just slowly, consistently moving up, which is really nice to see. Um, a tortoise in the hair sort of thing, but he's just so solid at the moment. Fund manager Zek, he's on 26 profit plus $5 in refunds. So he's at 31.30 there in total for me, which is also really, really good. Uh, he's getting sort of uh, close. Actually, he's got 45 in profit and $9 in refunds. So actually, he's on 54 around. Uh, in profit for me if I close that trade now. So if I close these copies right now, the value I'll get back, you see, as the 800 that I've net invested, plus the profit and loss, plus any uh, refunds or minus any fees. So the value, you see, so it's 845 plus this, 854.73. If I close the copy right now, so if I go here and I click, you know, uh, stop copying, but I'll get back the value, 854. So you can sort of work out what your actual profit is by looking at the value and minusing your net invested. So there we are. Who else is doing well? Swissway is still doing well. Fund Manager Zek is doing well. Thomas JP, he's down a bit from where he was, but he's still doing well. Kresimir is down. Kresimir is down at $8.38. Why is Kresimir down? Because these trades have just sort of moved against him. So it's the New Zealand dollar against the Canadian dollar it has moved against him. He's still in those trades. He's got a few of them open, but there we are. Let's have a look at the New Zealand dollar, uh, um, Canadian dollar. Not that I know really anything about this. This is stuff which I want Kresimir to look at, and he's the guy who knows. Forex is all to do with what's happening between countries, trade decisions and disputes and macroeconomic factors. It's really complex. I have no idea what's going to make the New Zealand dollar appreciate against the Canadian dollar, currencies of nations. So I rely on Kresimir to have a look at this. Sometimes I do have a look, though, just have a look. And we can see, zooming in here, I'm going to close that. We can see that it has been having a rough time. Remember, he's long. He's buying New Zealand dollar against Canadian dollar. So he's hoping this would be green. And it's going very, very much red at the moment. Zooming out. We can see that in the long term, so what's this? This is uh, January, February of 2021. So over years, it's been on a long downtrend, but you can still sort of trade it long and make money. Why? Because the market doesn't move in a straight line. It never goes straight line down. It goes down for a few months and then up and then down. You see the pattern, the oscillation that you can see. And traders really take advantage of this. They know the overall pattern, but they also trade not just on the fundamentals of whether one currency is stronger or weaker than the other, but also on what's happening with the charts. They also know, they're aware of these oscillations, and they time their trades to go in and out in certain channels, and they're very clever with it. But you have to sort of be very familiar with things to do that, which I'm not. Over here, uh, it is on a sort of long downward slope. And we can see uh, it's sort of hitting resistance levels or support levels here, which is places where it's changed direction in the past. Hitting sort of support levels. Also, do you ever use these? Do you ever use any of the tools, the chart analysis tools? Some of them over here, which I, I used to try and use a bit, Bollinger Bands. So there we are. These are Bollinger Bands, which sort of, again, 
They, they measure really the speed of, of the selling or buying, the momentum of assets, the volatility. There's a moving average, that red line in the middle. At the moment, it's on the very low end. See, look at this, standard deviations. It's right sticking to the lower wall. And do you see how it does that, how it's sticking to that lower wall? There's also one called the relative strength, RSI. Let's try that, relative uh, strength index, see, which shows basically, again, it's oversold. It's gone off the bottom of the chart. The speed at which this asset is moving in price, the change of price, is very sharply downwards at the moment. Do you use any of these um, sort of make your decisions in trading? I looked at them a bit in the beginning. It's not something I use now because I don't trade manually. But I remember them, and I know a lot of people sort of find these very helpful. They're not foolproof, but they can be helpful. I'll get rid of them anyhow. So there we are. There's my little bit of technical analysis, tiny little intro to technical analysis. It's useful to watch it. But again, I do rely on Kresmir to get his way out of that trade and back into profit. I think it's something you can do. So there we are. Right, so Selesh is actually still down. He's down even further than he was in the last one. Selesh is having a tough time at the moment. Let's have a look at him, not to rub it in. I don't want to rub it in. You know, I want him to do well. And people are down and then they're up and they're down and... But let's have a look at why. So it's the major indices again, the major US index, US index, another one, and the UK one. He's shorting them all, meaning shorting, you're, you're betting the price will go down and you want to make value, you want to make money off the price as it falls, that's shorting. So he thought that the value was going to go down of all these. The value of these indices has gone up, so we're in the red. Now, what's been happening with that? We'll go to his own portfolio here. And we can click here and we can see history. So what trades have been closing? And we can see that his sell on the German 40, he was also trading the German 40, big German index of German companies. And he was shorting it, saying he bets it's going to go down. It's been going up in value. And that's hit stop loss. So all of the German 40 trades have closed now. They're not in the portfolio. Minus 50% on all of them. Look at that. So there's some of the sells on gold. Well, that one's in profit. But the sell Dow Jones 30, American index closed, SPX 500 closed. So it's been a sort of series of, of difficult closes. These are all the German 40. I think we've done really badly with that. So it's been all these trades are starting to close. He has put stop losses on all of these trades so that the, the losses aren't just infinite. He's put a stop loss on them. In this case, it looks to be around 50%. So he said, if this ever, trade ever loses me 50%, all right, close it automatically. I'm not. I'll stay in the trade. I'll let it draw down 49%. But if it hits 50, we're out. And we can see them actually starting to close in his portfolio. So just going back to um, my portfolio and to my copy of him, See, the German uh, 40 ones have actually all gone now, and these are starting to close as they get lower and lower. Now, some of the others are in profit, um, but it's really these are what's dragging it down. Now, if we go back to his stats here, we can have a look, because this happened in the past. This, are these losses normal for him? Again, we look at sort of how he loses, and we can see there's often two months of losses, and the second month is often bigger than the, the first month. I'm hoping that that's what we're seeing here, and this pattern repeats. He's down 2.42% in February. He's down 4.82% so far in March. Again, we're nearly down 5%. It's about the same as in the last video, isn't it, um, for March. Let's look, though. His risk score's gone up. So we were seeing 2, 3, max 3. Now we're seeing average 3, max 5. It's shot up a bit there. But we've seen copiers leaving, not that many, about 5% in the last seven days. Now let's look at this. So in the past, we have seen that he's, like, mostly profitable, right? So most of the time... He's getting trades in the NASDAQ 100 right. Most of the time, he's right. But when he is wrong, he tends to let those losses run to where we're seeing it now, okay? Now, that's you can say, oh, that's not good. He should, you know, don't let him run so much. But it's also, in a way, we can see that mostly he's profitable. And in the past, this has happened before. But most of the time, he gets it right. When he gets it wrong, it's a big loss. But most of the time, he's right. So overall, he makes lots of money. We can see the same with the German 40, all right? 139 trades. Now, we've just seen about five, six trades go wrong. But he's traded 139 times on the German 40. 87.7%. 87% of the time, he's right when he trades the German 30. He picks the right direction. When he's wrong and he picks the wrong direction, we can see that it's on average a 44.20% loss. So when he's right, it's normally a little win. When he's wrong, it's normally a big loss. But... He's much more normally correct, right? So that's how he's making money. Unfortunately, it seems we've hit some of these lost times. So they look huge at the moment. What I'm hoping is that this pattern is true. These win rates will continue and that we'll get back to the winning way and he'll absorb those losses and sort of make profits to outweigh them. We can see, though, this is something that's happened in the past. However, 
doesn't seem to be too often that it's happening. That's quite reassuring for me. Uh, so looking back at the, not this cover, back at the portfolio, we're seeing that Selesh is down, but the other ones are up. We're back sort of in green, and that's generally quite a nice turnaround. I'm happy with that. Now, what else I wanted to look at, and I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to keep this a bit short. I just wanted to show you basically that Amit's back in profit. No, that's awesome, really. I was just happy with it. Um, down here in potential traders to copy, this guy here is doing really well. Look at this. 2020, 20.84%. 2021, 19.17%. 2022, 10.68%. 2023, 21.93%. And 2024, so far, 13.05%. So that's quite a nice view, isn't it? Way to see it. Return to date, 13.05. Return over the last two years, 52.57% over the last two years. Third, three risk score. We'll go to stats and just have a look at what he's doing. I'll go over this. I'm going to uh, sort of look at this and review him in the next one because he's been doing really well for the last sort of five years. Well, sort of four and a bit years. Well, four years, really, because there's three full years and then there's these months and these. He's doing really well. Risk scores, again, consistently low. Um, average three, max three. Low yearly drawdowns. He spiked up. Look at that. Plus 68.75% in the last seven days. Why? Because the editor's choice pointed him out. I had put him on my watch list quite a while ago. But I hadn't really looked at him again. I hadn't watched what he was doing. I hadn't taken note of it. And he wasn't in the suggestion, so I sort of missed him. He's only got 189 copiers, but that's shooting up, I think, since he went on to that. Uh, what does he trade? A mixture. Stocks, currencies, indices, ETFs, cryptos, commodities. Really quite well balanced. I think if I had more money, I might sort of uh, give it a shot. Uh, over here, there was something that I saw. Where did I see it? Hold on a minute. Let's go to the Discover page, and let's see if he's sort of still on that watch list, that list over there. Uh, Ami Kupfer, look at the people, copy trader. So I'm copying him, I'm copying him, I'm copying him. Oh wow, look at this. They're sort of all the people I'm copying there. Stuart Fitzell, let's see if the guy I was just looking at is here. Kresim is on there, Zeng Bin. It's my portfolio. Are in the, uh, um, are being recommended. That's a good sign. Marco Hillbrand, here he is, Swiss way. Uh, oh, the guy here, who I was just looking at, he doesn't seem to be, is this it here? No, triangular, we had a look at him. He's not here. But there was a notice next to him, right? When it showed the guy I was just looking at here, there was an extra notice, I think it was here or somewhere, which sort of said, you know, this, this trader's portfolio is well diversified. You know? And it's true. And it's saying that meaning this might be quite a safe asset, you know, and not uh, investment advice. But it is true that he's got a real nice balance of different um, asset types here. He's not sort of into any one asset, which, which seems great. Um, anyhow, I'll go over this and I'll have a better look at him. 100,000 to 300,000 copy assets under management. Do you have any experience with him? I'll look at his chart quickly. We don't see any major steep drawdowns. Are any of you copying this guy? Are any of you having a copy of this guy? If so, uh, he's at the champion level popular investor. So he's second up on the tier. He's not at the green star or the black star. He's past blue. He's now at the red star. Have you got any experience with him? Please, if you do have any experience copying this trader, please let me know because I might add him to the portfolio. If I get some money this month, if I get any, I might add some more money and copy him as well. Uh, see how it's going. How's your portfolio going? Any other people to copy, please let me know. I'm just happy to see Ami back in green because it was worrying me there for a bit. I hope Celeste turns around. We'll see. Let me know if you're copying the potential new guy. See you in the next one. Hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.